imagine this. The lights go out, not just in your home, but across the country. No electricity, no phones, no internet, no gas pumps, just silence and panic. How would you survive the first 72 hours? A power grid failure is no longer science fiction. Whether from cyber attacks, EMP blasts, extreme weather, or aging infrastructure, the risk is real. And when it happens, those first 72 hours decide everything. In today's video, we'll walk you through what really goes down and how to survive when the world goes dark. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment your survival plan down below. You might just help someone else stay alive. Hour zero. The blackout begins. You're scrolling through your phone, maybe watching Netflix, maybe making dinner. Then, boom, darkness, not a flicker. A total blackout. At first, it's annoying. You check the fuse box, nothing. You look outside, no streetlights, no traffic signals. The entire block is out. Then the city, then the news stops coming in. And that's when it hits you. This isn't just a blackout, this is a grid failure. With no power, your refrigerator is now a ticking time bomb of spoilage. Your phone is useless within 24 hours, gas pumps won't work, ATMs are dead, and unless you already have cash and supplies, you're behind. Most people waste the first few hours waiting for it to come back. That's a mistake. The moment you realize it's grid-wide, you need to act, fast. Hour 1-6, secure, assess, and move. The first six hours are for one thing. Securing resources and assessing your situation. Step one, water. You have three to four days without water before your body starts shutting down. If the power outage affects your local treatment plant or well pump, water pressure may drop fast. Fill up every bathtub, sink, and container you can. Step two, perishables. Eat what's in the fridge first. Prioritize high protein, high energy foods. After four hours without power, that fridge becomes unsafe. After 24 hours, the freezer goes too, unless you keep it shut. Step three, communication. Text or call loved ones, but conserve battery. Let someone know your location and that you're okay. Consider walkie-talkies, ham radios, or even crank radios if you've prepped. Step four, cash and fuel. If you can, hit a gas station ASAP. Most won't work without power, but some might have backup generators. Same for stores. Grab batteries, canned goods, first aid supplies, and baby wipes. You won't get another chance. Hour six to 12, first signs of chaos. As the first 12 hours pass, people start realizing, this isn't a small outage, panic sets in. You'll start seeing lines form at stores and gas stations, tempers flare. People who didn't prepare will try to buy, barter, or steal what they need. Law enforcement may still be operating, but stretched thin. By now, your home needs to be locked down and defensible. Check locks, block windows, and keep your lights, if any, minimal. If you have a generator, great, but use it smartly. Sound carries in silence. Don't advertise that you have power or supplies. Shelter is key. You want a safe, dry place where you can wait things out. If you're in a city, consider whether it's safer to stay or bug out. High population density means higher risk. Hour 12 to 24, night one. The first night is when it gets real. There's no heat if it's winter, no AC if it's summer. You'll need blankets, layered clothing, or emergency sleeping bags. Without power, temperatures inside can drop fast. If you have flashlights, use them sparingly. Save batteries. Candles work, but be cautious of fire risk. A small solar lantern or crank light becomes gold in this scenario. Many people won't sleep well. The quiet is eerie. Dogs barking, sirens wailing, maybe even distant shouting. You'll want to keep watch, even if just in shifts with family. It's rare, but break-ins and thefts start quickly when people are desperate. Your goal, survive the night, keep warm, stay quiet, and observe. You'll know by morning how bad it's going to get. Hour 24 to 36, reality sets in. Now it's been a full day. The food is spoiling, the phone is dead, your neighbors are starting to freak out. You'll want to switch to your long-term supply mode. That means rationing water, switching to canned or dried food, and staying hydrated. Boil water if you're unsure of its source. If you have purification tablets or a portable filter like LifeStraw, use them. Waterborne illness is a fast way to ruin your survival chances. Now's also the time to establish roles and routines. If you're with others, assign jobs. Someone watches for news, someone handles food, someone handles defense. Information becomes your most valuable tool. If you have a battery-powered or solar radio, try to get updates. Listen for FEMA or emergency broadcasts. This will tell you whether to stay put or leave. And most importantly, don't panic. People will begin making risky decisions around this time. Avoid conflict, keep your group calm. Fear leads to mistakes. Hour 36 to 48, the search for resources. By now, most unprepared people are out of food. The lines at supermarkets are gone because there's nothing left. This is when scavenging begins. If it's safe, and only if it's safe, you may need to move to find supplies. 
Don't go alone. Don't go unarmed and only move during daylight. Avoid looting, not just because it's illegal, but because looting attracts violence. Instead, focus on smaller stores people might overlook. Hardware shops, office break rooms, vending machines. If you're truly isolated and bugging out is an option, you might be better off finding a rural spot to hunker down. But that depends on your location, transportation, and fuel. Another growing issue, sanitation. Toilets won't flush without water. Trash piles up. Disease spreads fast. If you didn't prep a portable toilet, dig a latrine 200 feet from your water source. Hygiene can't be ignored. Hour 48 to 60, help or helpless. This is the tipping point. Two days in, many emergency services stop responding. Hospitals are overwhelmed or closed. The government, if it's still coordinating, may begin deploying aid or announcing martial law. You'll likely hear rumors, some true, some dangerous. Stick to trusted info only. If there's an evacuation notice, don't wait. Pack your bug out bag and go, but only if it's truly safer than staying. The human psyche begins to deteriorate here. People become anxious, aggressive, and unpredictable. If you have a community, neighbors, friends, even strangers, this is when unity or collapse happens. You'll start to notice who's calm and who's cracking. Some may organize neighborhood patrols. Others will loot in desperation. Mistrust spreads faster than fire. Was that noise outside a raccoon or someone trying to get in? Your mental strength becomes just as important as food or water, because when the structure of society breaks, your mindset is your last defense. You'll need to make tough decisions. Who do you help? Who do you turn away? How long can your supplies really last? If you've prepared, you're ahead, but the danger isn't over. It's just beginning. Hour 60 to 72, the breaking point. Three days in and the world feels like a different place. The silence of electricity is now normal. Your body is tired. Your mind, on edge. You've burned calories just from stress, but you made it 72 hours. You've likely rationed your food and water, created a shelter and safe space, avoided unnecessary risks stayed informed or found ways to adapt, kept your group calm and organized. Most experts say the first 72 hours are the most critical. If help hasn't arrived yet, it might soon, or it might not, but you've survived the most chaotic period, the human reaction to collapse. After this point, it becomes about long-term survival, farming, bartering, rebuilding. But if you made it to here, you've already beaten the odds. A power grid failure isn't a horror movie plot, it's a real possibility. But panic won't save you. Preparation will. You don't need a bunker or thousands of dollars in gear. You need knowledge, a, a plan, a calm head, and the will to act when others freeze. Start small. Store extra water. Get a crank radio. Create a go bag. Talk to your family. Practice a blackout drill. Because the truth is, we're all just one bad day away from the grid going silent. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more survival breakdowns, and drop a comment. What's the first thing you'd do in a grid down scenario? Stay prepared, stay smart, and stay safe.